until now we discussed uh, uh, piezoelectric effect uh, by taking uh, temperature, stress, and electric field as independent variables. Uh, so it's interesting to see uh, what uh, happens if we take a different set of uh, of independent variables. In fact, this is something that is very important for uh, applications, uh, for a coupling of properties, because what at the end it means is just that we are changing the boundary conditions under which uh, our experiment is done or under which uh, uh, we are operating our device. So let's go uh, uh, back to the first slide. You remember we had uh, free energy and we considered changes of these free energies, which can be written in terms of uh, elastic, electrical and uh, thermally related uh, energy. And then we uh, using Lejeune uh, transformation, we defined another uh, uh, free energy, uh, another energy thermodynamic function uh, gives free energy uh, by uh, uh, subtracting from uh, free energy uh, uh, these uh, different uh, combinations of uh, 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 thermodynamic variables. And uh, so we started with uh, uh, entropy uh, strain and uh, the electric displacement. And now we would like to have temperature and stress, but keep uh, the electric displacement instead of electric field as independent variable. So what we do, we uh, form uh, free energy by subtracting these two parts, but not uh, not electrical parts. And uh, the change of uh, this free energy is given uh, with this uh, relationship uh, here. Uh, so we find the differential of this, we add this to that, and we get, uh, we get that. Uh, so now again, uh, the entropy is first derivative of, uh, of uh, this uh, G, uh, this should be G star. Uh, so I think I have here some errors uh, in, uh, in these slides. Um, because I was doing uh, copy paste uh, with stress and D constant uh, strain is equal to uh, first derivative with respect to stress with temperature and D constant and uh, electric field is uh, equal to uh, derivation of G with respect to D with uh, T and sigma constant. Uh, in uh, terms of experiment, what, what does this mean? Well, if we apply pressure, uh, we have two choices. Uh, we produce some charge and either we can uh, allow that charge to uh, throw uh, freely through the circuit. So we have some current, uh, so it's short circuited condition, or we can measure voltage in which case uh, the circuit has to be open circuited and we measure the voltage that that charge which is generated by the pressure through piezoelectric effect uh, generate. And uh, this will uh, actually change how material is deformed by the pressure, will change uh, also which type of a piezoelectric uh, coefficient we have. So let's... Uh, see what we can learn about this piezoelectric coefficient and uh, what happens when we apply Maxwell uh, relations uh, there. Uh, so we have a, a G star here, okay? And uh, <coughs> uh, I repeat what was, uh, what was done uh, here, except that there is uh, also error. This should be D, this should be D, okay? Because that's the independent uh, uh, variable. And also here I'm using U as a strain and here strain, so that should be constant and I will write here epsilon. Uh,
so we can recognize same as what we did before uh, piezoelectric effect piezoelectric effect relates uh, one electrical uh, well, electric variable and one mechanical variable so it would be strain and uh, and uh, uh, the electric displacement or uh, electric field and and stress uh, this would be direct piezoelectric effect. Uh, uh, the result is uh, electric variable, and uh, this would be uh, converse uh, piezoelectric effect uh, because the result is a mechanical variable. So we can start with uh, this one here. Uh, use definition uh, that we uh, that we have over here. Put it there. Uh, and then do the same trick with inverting the order in which we do uh, derivation and get that uh, converse and the direct piezoelectric effect must be the same. But now the coefficient is no longer uh, D, but uh, so-called G piezoelectric coefficient. Uh, what, does, uh, what does this mean? Well, uh, remember, uh, what we have here is that uh, uh, we have creation of electric field uh, when we apply uh, pressure. And uh, before we had we had this. So it cannot be the same piezoelectric coefficient. Uh, they are related uh, through the permittivity because displacement, the electric displacement and electric field are related. Uh, I seem to have lost here a minus sign and you should uh, check that please. Uh, please check that. Uh, so, uh, what we can do is we can uh, we can write down uh, uh, we have as electric uh, variables uh, d and e uh, and we have as uh, uh, mechanical variables epsilon and sigma and we can basically make uh, sets of four different equations uh, taking only electrical uh, and mechanical uh, variables which are which are called piezoelectric constitutive equations and they are all given under isothermal uh, conditions so uh, this is the first set that we have this is the one that we uh, just uh, discussed uh, we should not write uh, this. Uh, and the relationship between these different piezoelectric coefficients is uh, given here. And I will show you how you can derive that uh, beta is equal one over kappa, uh, uh, which is the electric permittivity uh, here. Uh, we use uh, epsilon for uh, uh, for a strain, and uh, substricts uh, derive the variables that are uh, that are uh, kept uh, constant. So that can be either strain or pressure, uh, and beta is inverse uh, permittivity or susceptibility. Uh, sometimes you will find these uh, the, uh, equations uh, written in terms of polarization and not dielectric displacement, but for most materials that we will be working with, like ferroelectrics, uh, this will not change much. However, in other materials, uh, there could be, with a, with a very small permittivity, this could be uh, different. So, uh, in uh, any physical problem uh, that you may deal with, you have to, if you have a constant temperature, you have to use uh, these uh, whole sets of so-called constitutive equations. And I will demonstrate to you why it is important. You are not looking only at uh, variables that you are changing and applying, but also th uh, those variables that may arise in the system because of the boundary. Uh, conditions. I will give you some examples of that later on. For example, for thin films, uh, this becomes very important. Uh, 
you will uh, uh, whichever set of these uh, uh, constitutive equations you use, you would eventually come to the right result. But if you choose a set that is not appropriate for your boundary conditions, then the equations in the system may be very, very complex, uh, sometimes impossible to solve. And it is also sometimes possible to use mix equations, one equation from one set of variables and uh, the other from uh, another set of uh, uh, variables. Uh, so uh, how can we, yes, uh, uh, one more thing, uh, I'm repeating those equations here, be very careful, uh, these are all tensors and we cannot divide tensors one uh, with the other, we can divide only components but not tensors, uh, so this is just uh, a symbolic one dimensional representation of, uh, of what we uh, have. Uh, Again, we can use some simple tricks to show what is the relationship between D and for example, E coefficient. So D is defined as uh, uh, D uh, 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 derivative with respect to, uh, to pressure. Uh, we can derive, we can uh, 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 write this as a uh, derivative of D with respect to strain and strain with respect uh, to stress and we get uh, and we get this. Uh, so that's the relation between piezoelectric D and E coefficients. So that's this one here and you can go on uh, like that. You can try it yourself. Uh, there will be also difference between adiabatic and isothermal piezoelectric effects. So whether you are measuring piezoelectric coefficient at constant temperature or you allow temperature to change uh, is not the same. And the difference uh, thermodynamically only exists uh, for materials that have polarization. P is piezoelectric coefficient, that's change of polarization uh, with uh, temperature, this is thermal expansion, this is temperature, and this is a uh, heat capacity. Uh, even in those materials where uh, this is uh, different from zero in the polar materials, this difference is uh, very small and usually uh, in the experiment whether temperature changes or not is not that, uh, is not that important. Uh, I want to come back here and uh, uh, ask you to uh, look at uh, uh, this that we are writing uh, compliance with the constant electric field or constant uh, current uh, displacement charge. And uh, this is very important. What this basically tells you is that the softness of your material piezoelectric material will depend on the boundary conditions uh, at which you measure it. If you measure uh, voltage, uh, you will get one elastic compliance, one young modulus. If you measure current, you will get another one. And this will help us define so-called coupling coefficients, which we will come to uh, later. Uh, so uh, we will now go into uh, piezoelectric and isotropy. Uh, a uh, very important uh, topic uh, for uh, piezoelectricity, uh, but I will uh, leave it uh, for the next presentation. So that the one on uh, variable change uh, is, uh, uh, is alone so that you can find it easily. So we will stop here. <laughs>